boots, 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 boots. Hello, welcome to the Brohio stream. Maybe the Brohio podcast stream. Look how much better we look. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, hopefully everybody can hear us okay out there in YouTube land. Ain't nobody there yet. Nobody cares at all. <laughs> to, you gotta tell us if you can hear us okay, guys. If it sounds like a bucket of shit or if... Sounds like... Hello? Oi, Candace. Hey, bros, I'm here, I'm here, I care, I care, I, can, I hear ya. Oh, they can hear us. Hear ya. Hear ya. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. We got Very a new web. Exciting. We got a new webcam. I hope you guys can tell. Not a new webcam. We have a fucking $12,000 camera we couldn't use. and We had to get a video capture card, which those are really easy to find during a pandemic. So <laughs> just like GPUs and computer parts. No, yeah. Nobody cares at all. Sweet mullet, Rob Dog. Hey, thank you. I grew it myself. Yeah, he did. Overnight. $12 from Amazon. You can have one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, someone's listening from Saudi Arabia? You're allowed to listen to us there? Nope, they're going to get beheaded. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> Sorry about your luck. Definitely getting beheaded. Let's pull up some Raper. That's the software we use. It's called Raper. Tom Raper RVs. <laughs> Richmond, Indiana. Oh, God. I need oh, okay. You're in Charlotte, not in Saudi. Okay. <laughs> so you fucked those up. No, it's, I swear to God, look at it. Arabian Let's see where we at here. Oh, he's from there. Gotcha. <laughs> well, congratulations on escaping. Yeah. <laughs> From there to Charlotte, North Carolina, good good move. Here the chicks have pretty hot ankles in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. We love you too. We love you. Hassan. Hassan? Yeah. Mm. All right. <clears throat> Let's get this thing popping. A Leon. What up, A Leon? A Leon. What's up, A Leon? You can kind of see him back there. Green doggy. Yeah, a little bit of his head. He's a motherfucker, dude. Yeah. He gets so much alien whatever it is. Tang. I don't even know. <laughs> oh. The little cola just fail. Yes, it did. <clears throat> I found if our Hello. cell phones are anywhere close to this right here, yep. that's what does it. Yeah. doesn't have to be on it, just anywhere close to it. Cool. Learn that. On video games the other night. <laughs> playing gaming. Okay. What were you playing? Call of Duty. That's the only oh, thing yeah. I know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, hi, Nick on Call of Duty. Whatever. If it come fucking find me. Oh, you, you didn't take Bro, hi, podcast? <laughs> no, I left, that, I left that one for you. You can have that one, buddy. <laughs> If you can't pee straight when you're done having sex, you've come to the right place. This is the Brohio Podcast. I'm the delicious Nicolicious. That is the story of my life. <laughs> it's Rob Dog, everybody. Can I get a fucking... Wherever you're at, just give me a good loud one. I want to hear it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You've heard it here first. Put your back into it. The whole, yeah. Just spread your, spread your wings. <laughs> oh, okay. And back up into it. <laughs> What do you think I was going to say? Uh, I'm not even going to say what I thought you were going to say. It's disgusting. It's okay. Uh, so thanks for coming to the show, guys. We're very thankful that you're here. We're back to a normal schedule. We've got the studio fixed. Well, it's not fixed. It's like 97.4% done. I got to paint our logo on the wall. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. So I'm hoping Rob just breaks in in the middle of the night and does it. That'd be really I'm cool. down, man. Uh, we got... I've been practicing calligraphy for like a month and a half now, and I'm... I'm I'm getting I, good. I fancy fountain pens. Yeah. I really fancy those. I, I use one at work. Everyone says, are you fucking Thomas Washington? I'm <laughs> like, who the fuck is Thomas Washington? <laughs> I'm a history podcaster, and I don't even know who that is. So let's figure that out together. No, um, <clears throat> I like to use a 
it just makes me feel quite ex- exquisite. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun to use. I feel you. But like you, when you started, before we started the show, you said something about, uh, what, what did I find out? Well, I said something about video games. I don't remember what it, what it was. Um, I said I figured it out while I was playing video games. Oh, yeah. We, I figured out when we put our cell phones near this microphone oh, yeah, table, yeah. we get a lot of interference. So yeah. hopefully we've alleviated that for now. But this is the first time that I've really... I've been playing Call of Duty. I I built a PC. Mm-hmm. I waited forever. I got a GTX 3060 GPU, which is the hardest goddamn thing to find right now. I met some guy in a parking lot. He said, "You want to suck my dick?" I did it. You know, I got through it. God, that guy needed to shave, but I got through <laughs> it. And I've been playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I'm not even on the newest one because I don't. I hear the newest one shit. So I'm Brohio Nick on there. I don't even know how you add people on there. I don't have anyone to talk to, no friends, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Just like real life. It's just like <laughs> real life. We're not drinking bourbon this episode. No, we did enough of that over the weekend. We got pretty well sloshed on Saturday. Yeah, we did. It was a good time. Rob said, here, drink this. And the next thing you know, I got hot man breathing on my neck. <laughs> hot beard. Just. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it, was a, it was a good time. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I always do. But yeah, uh, good fights. Good it was UFC really good fights, fights yeah. I was on a t- last podcast on the left group. I'm on all these other podcast groups mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, I uh, frequent occasionally. And there's a thing that popped up that said, what's the one podcast you cannot stand, yada, yada, yada. And these two bitches <laughs> <laughs> said, I came here just to say, bro, Ohio. And then they said something about shitty research and uh, they're not funny. Their formula doesn't work. Well, guess what, you fucking bitch. Or, I'm sorry. I, I hate using the... I hate... You know, I don't know if she's a bitch or not, but she's got a really nasty attitude on Facebook, and that's all that matters. So, <laughs> listen here, Karen. The guys that last podcast on the left are celebrities that do their podcast for a living, and you and I are poor people. We're like street rats that do our podcast whenever we have time. And I think... I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but from where we came from to where we are now, I'm very happy with the results. We're doing a little bit, yeah. I'm very happy with the results. And I just hate that to see people get online just to put a creator down. And the internet is such a nasty fucking place. Mm -hmm. And it really warms my heart. In the last episode, I said, you know, both of us are kind of getting a block. We're we're not doing uh, creatively thinking about good new topics. And we got a fucking landslide from you guys of topic recommendations. I would say probably around 200 people wrote us with topic recommendations. Thank you, guys. And it means so much to us that you care enough about us and you care enough about our show and our content that you want to help us out. And it means the world to us. It really does. And I just want to show my heartfelt appreciation to everybody listening. We really do care about you guys. I hope that the world gets back to normal soon so we can go to Boston and L.A. and um uh, Atlanta and Texas and all these different places where all of you are at, we can come see you because I know there's people all over the United States that I would love to go meet that listen to us that have, you know, given us essentially portions of their lives to, to us. And I want to, I want to go around and thank everybody big time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. It means and, a lot. And if keep the topic recommendations coming because I got a spreadsheet that I started. So just send us an email, bro, Ohio podcast at gmail.com or, in I th- I forget I forgot about this, but apparently I said something about if you can fit your uh, fit your fist up to your uh, elbow, elbow in your ass, send us an email. And then some guy sent us an email, and it was him on like a fucking machine getting his absolute guts tore out. Didn't mean to click on it. I did. Didn't turn. Didn't do much for me. Good for him. Sometimes I wonder about if I see that stuff by accident. If it'll turn me on, it did not turn me on. It made me hurt. It caused a loose <laughs> stool. I think that says more about you than it does him. I don't know. <laughs> it's a really confusing world. And that's what I try to tell my uh, uncle every time he tried to grab my wiener when I was little. I said, yeah. this is a really confusing world, man. I don't know what I like. I know I don't how like can, cantaloupe. I'm allergic to that. Cantaloupe how could something so wrong feel so good? <laughs> <laughs> no. What this guy, this guy was, this machine was having sex with him, and it was entering him rectally. Mm-hmm. And if you guys are on the YouTube stream, we got a new camera, so you can see this really good right now. 
but the machine was like a giant dildo, and when it would go through his butthole, you could <clears> see the head of the dick come out of his belly button. It would, uh, push, it would push his stomach out like four, five, six inches. Good for him. Oh, it was traumatic. <laughs> it was traumatic altogether. Get it, boy. Yeah, so uh, keep those emails coming really early. We, we, we uh, do appreciate that stuff. <laughs> there is two Patreon subscribers since we recorded two days ago. Amber Jackson. Amber, God bless you, girl. Sorry about the crocheting accident that, um, no, wait. I I think, you know, that that's one cool, uh, that's one of my most favorite, I guess, hobbies that someone can do is crocheting. It, just it is pretty cool. It fascinates me. It I really love, is. I love a good crocheter. So if you're a good crocheter, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com, especially if you're a man crocheter, because that means you got really strong. Strong hands, and you got this next one, Rob. Strong, limber fingers. Uh, Chase Loveless, thank you very much. And if you are interested in becoming a fan of the Brohio podcast on Patreon and getting ad-free content for 99 cents per month, go to patreon.com slash podcast. We have a article this week for you. Let me see. I lost it here. Let's see if I can pull it back. Oh, yes. Anytime a town is terrorized by a swan, I am all ears. <laughs> <laughs> Swan, swans don't typically strike me as asshole animals, you know. No, geese, on the other hand, geese are a motherfucker. Yeah. Fuck a goose. I will not, not literally fuck but... a goose. I will kill a goose. Yes. I went fishing one time and I got attacked by one. My dad said that is the single most violent act he's ever witnessed in his life. Me swinging that <laughs> fishing rod. <laughs> now, speaking of my dad, you know, my dad has been a huge supporter of the show. Yeah. He's been uh, a, a, my biggest fan my entire life, whether it's sports, whatever I decided to get into. Mm-hmm. Uh, he used to come to my shows and I was in a band. He listens to this, but then he dropped the bomb on me. He just got a second Moderna vaccine. He was fucked up, dude. He was <laughs> shivering. Oh, no. Sweats, fever. He was messed up, man. So yeah. He's feeling better now. Good, good, good. But he, I went over there to, to drop off some stuff, and he was under the blankets shivering, and he said, I was trying to listen to your fucking podcast. And usually he's not upset about the podcast. He's yeah. usually laughing because my mom's upset about it. Right. And he said, what did you got? Are you guys, like, smoking helium or something before you start? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, when I listen... It just sounds like you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> he said the last 10 episodes he's tried to listen to, he said, we talk like we're drunk. I said, open up your podcast app, Dad. <laughs> he opened it up. He had us at half speed. He oh, long, he had damn his, it. He locked in at half speed. <laughs> and I clicked it, and I hit the play button, and it's like, hey, this is the delicious Nicholas. This is from the Brohio podcast. Thanks for jumping in. And he's like, he's well, like what'd you do? He said, well, God fucking damn, what'd you do? I said, you had us locked in at half speed there, buddy. He said, oh, I missed a few episodes. He apologized for missing the episode. I said, no, that's cool, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's working out, buddy. But he said uh, he had me locked in at half speed. I got them all. I got them all fixed. The government fixed him with the 5G and the Moderna. I fixed him with the... Um, Ohio podcast half speed. On to the swan. Stop looking at me, swan. Knock, knock. Who's there? A swan. The residents of a town in England have been dealing with a confusing nuisance involving a swan that seemingly likes to knock on doors. Unfortunately for homeowners, it apparently will knock on a single door for up to three hours. Damn. <laughs> quack, quack, motherfucker. <laughs> the, f- the phenomenon <laughs> has been going on for five years in Northampton, East Midlands, Southwest News Service reports. According to the news outlet, no one is sure why the bird is behaving this way. Five fucking years. Oh, man, he would have caught, uh, they don't have guns there. He would have caught a knife in the neck for sure. Oh, definitely. The swan has been out there for seven or eight years with its mate, homeowner Stephen Legg told the outlet. Around this time of, of year, five years ago, the male swan started messing around my front door. It rattles the letterbox with its beak and stands in front of the glass. <laughs> I'm just here to talk to you about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He starts by rattling the letterbox, then bashes the metal with its beak quite loudly. The racket reverberates through the whole house, uh, Leg alleged. It doesn't do any damage, but it's extremely irritating. <laughs> Something it does for three hours at a time, other times once or twice. The man said he doesn't feed the bird and remains mystified as 
guy is attracted to his door. He's tried to install devices to scare the swan away with no luck. That's a big old brass balls in that swan. While he was able to temporarily stop the swan by simply covering the whole door, but that also stopped the local mailman from delivering the mail. Uh, according to the news outlet, the bird has been targeting houses on one specific block. <laughs> He's just specifically targeting. He knows exactly which people he wants to fuck with. Good for him. Who's there? <laughs> I don't know. What kind of sound does a swan make? Do I don't they, know. Do they even make sounds? I'm sure they do. Um, You know what? Let's dial it up real quick. Let's go to YouTube. It has to be similar to like a fucking goose or something. <laughs> It's gotta be. Uh, you think you think that's right or no? I would think so. What? What sound does Swan make? <laughs> We're gonna look it up. Stop looking at me, Swan. Yeah. Here it goes. Swan sound. This is 2016, so they may have changed their sounds by now. <laughs> this is very anticlimactic, right? It here. really is. They're so pretty, though. Look at them. I oh. just want a fucking swan going wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> what wow. Okay. That's a black swan. So it sounds like in my bedroom when I'm climaxing. Yeah, like Squeaky Springs. <laughs> 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 I don't even know what the fuck that was. <laughs> Okay, uh, this episode of the Ohio podcast is about the Wineville chicken coop murders. If you're a fan of Hysteria 51, unfortunately, these guys covered this about three or four weeks ago. I did not know that until I was completely done with my research. I did not listen to the show. So if it sounds like we plagiarized anything, just know that we both go to the same spot for research for this one. <laughs> I didn't listen to it. Those uh, great guys over there. We're going to have them on our show soon. We're going to do like a little lightning round where people ask us a bunch of questions Hell yeah. about conspiracies. We're really excited to link up with those guys. But if you did just hear this topic over there, because I know we got a lot of c- c- shared listeners. We're sorry. We apologize. It wasn't intentional. We have a lot of good topics. We had. So uh, we were supposed to interview a guy tonight. He's a victim of gang stalking. In targeted individuals. Okay. Where he just fucking runs from the government all day long. And he has this long story about how he's targeted by the government and about the stuff that he's going through. And I said, let's interview, you know, let's get this interview together. And I started to research targeted individuals. The research for that is completely infinite, it is never ending. So I said, I'm going to have to circle back with you, dude. I'm going to need a few weeks on this one. but Nice. Looking forward to talking to him. That's fun. I'm not going to say his name because I don't know if he wants his name mentioned, but I'm really looking forward to us talking to him. Cool. Just uh, And I joined a targeted individuals group on Facebook. <laughs> of course you did. Wowee. <laughs> <laughs> and there's people like, have you noticed them wiping out your bank accounts? Have you noticed them changing the channel? on? Some of these motherfuckers are crazy. I'm going to say it, okay? <laughs> They're definitely crazy. But it's going to be, that'll be a fun topic as well. Hell yeah. So this is the uh, Wineville Chicken Coop murder, murders. You're thinking that this probably takes place in the heartland, somewhere around Kentucky, West Virginia. But this actually takes place in wine country. This takes place in California. Okay. And the one thing I can tell you about California, California knows how to party. Look it up. Tupac said it himself. Dr. Dre. <laughs> I love that song. It's like one of my most favorite songs of all time. Okay. This is going to be taking us back to 1928, the year of our Lord, <laughs> in Southern California. The area in, that we're talking about here, uh, Wineville, near Los Angeles. This is right about the time that Hollywood was starting to come to life. Hollywood was kind of taking on this global aura where they, you know, it's... Hollywood. Everyone wants to go to Hollywood. Everyone thinks that all the famous people live there. Now all the famous people live in Texas. They're leaving Hollywood. No one wants to live in California anymore. Too many fucking people. Because all the bums shit on the sidewalk. Very true. And if you are in California and you're you're a homeless person, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. Let us know how that is working out for you. I'd love to hear. I would like to hear someone's story 
that was just like, dude, I was homeless for five years, and just hear the wild story. Not someone that was homeless in like Indianapolis. That's not yeah, like cutthroat some, gangster. Someone like sk- on Skid Row. Yeah, like I died from heroin f- <laughs> four times in a day once. I'd love to hear someone's story like that. Yeah, I think um, Bob from, and I I think Bob from uh, Tales from the Dark has definitely got some f- fucking virus downloaded on my shit because anytime I start to research a topic, this dude fucking does it. So, <laughs> and he was looking, he did an uh, episode on the mole people of, of uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. And there's an entire city of people that live underneath of Las Vegas. They're called the mole people. Okay. They live in the tunnels. They only come out at night, but there's an entire population of people that live underneath of the city. In Las Vegas. I know you're going there. Yeah, maybe I'll find one and fuck one. Well, you fuck the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey, can I get a grilled cheese? And then you're like, no, but you can get this fat cheese right here if that's what you want, boy. <laughs> Go down the, just uh, like a fucking Ninja Turtle, dude. Just, yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, just send down there, see what they're all about. I'll see if I can find one. Be amongst your people, get fleas on your wiener. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so bad. <sighs> This, uh, let me, let me, let me fucking, I hate how I have this goddamn shit set up. I can't fucking see what I'm doing. Oh, oh, oh. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> my God. Whatever. <laughs> now it's in the camera screen. Whatever. Lots, there was lots of agriculture that was still sprinkled in the area at the time, even though we were uh, coming to the infancy of hollywood taking advantage of the uh, agricultural boom and advantages of the area was a canadian farmer by the name of gordon northcott gordon hell yeah gordon gordon not like gordon as in the fucking fish dicks (laughs) we're talking about canadian gordon right here every guy from canada is named gordon if you ever meet a guy that says he's from canada and his name is not gordon he's lying to you did you know that I didn't, but that sounds very factual. I don't know anyone from from Canada except for the Canadian crippler, Chris Benoit. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> he wiped out his family. Oh, yeah. He would make a good topic as well. Uh, now, prior to 1928 and 1924, Gordon... He was a hard-working chicken rancher in the small town of Wineville. Oh, man. He had to move because there was a, there were some allegations going around the city that he was kind of dabbling in some sexual assault. There was He was doing some really bad things. Against people or chickens? Chickens, kids, all. women, you name it, dude. Okay. He was fucking all of them. Hey. And I don't, I've, I don't know if there really are chicken fuckers out there, mm-hmm. but there might be. I don't know. Um, he got his dad to build him a house in Wineville. Hmm. He had a time. Ta- he had a hard time with the land at first, and he needed help. In 1926, he got the help of 13-year-old nephew Sanford Clark from Saskatchewan. Hell yeah! Where is Saskatchewan? Uh, Saskatchewan. Somewhere up New there. Mexico. <laughs> Somewhere up there in Canada. Yeah, I don't fucking know. And Canada is practically Russia. Practically. It's in... So... They're fucking terrorists there in Canada. Yeah, I think it's like in Russia somewhere. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Alaska, Russia, it's all the same shit. New Mexico, it's all the same. And little did uh, little did little Sanford Clark know that the multitude of shit that he would go through when he went to go work on the ranch with his uncle Gordon Northcott. So we got Sanford, the little kid. Sanford is 13, 14 years old. He's going to work with his uncle. It's either his uncle or his cousin. I'm not completely sure. I think it's, it's his all uncle. The, it's all the same up yeah. there, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> He's going to work with his uncle on his uncle's chicken farm in California. So his, his uncle Gordon went to Canada and talked to Sanford's mom and said, hey, I need some help around the ranch. And she said, you know what? I'm going to give you Sanford. I'm going to give you him. He's 13 years old. He's got uh, nothing going for him in his life. <laughs> He's uglier than fucking shit. He looks like a goddamn turtle with no shell. He uh, He's cross-eyed. He's bow-legged. He shits out of his knee. He doesn't even have a regular butthole. His, uh, he actually, we tried to do a butthole transplant, and they fucked it up, and he shits out of his knee now. So 
Anytime he squats down to tie his shoes, he fucking shits all over the floor. Oh, man, that would be so inconvenient. He doesn't have any friends. <laughs> He's always wearing sandals, so his toes are always nasty. <laughs> he shits out of his knee, which is the worst part for him. <laughs> That's all you got to keep saying. <laughs> we got nothing for him to do. He's going to fucking die out here in Canada. You know, the only jobs they have is squatting down and picking up crates of maple syrup. And if, by God, every time he does that, he just shits out of his knee. <laughs> and where would be the most inconvenient place for a butthole? Like the most, I think like right, your in, mouth. right in the middle of your neck. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, so you say your mouth would be the most inconvenient place for a butthole. I would think so, yeah. <laughs> You like take a big old drink of Coke and you're like, you yawn and a turd just falls out. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, he's going to burp. Nope. <laughs> Not going to burp at all. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, he he gets his he gets his nephew, Sanford Clark from Saskatchewan. Little did, uh, like I said, little did little Sanford Clark know that the, the multitude of shit that he was going to be going through at the ranch. So we got to flash forward a couple years. This is when things start to get pretty weird. Okay. On March 10th, 1928, Christine Collins, completely unrelated to <laughs> Saskatchewan and Gordon and the butthole me kid, she's, uh, she comes home from work. She was a telephone operator. So top 10 coolest jobs in the world, not telephone operator. Yeah, definitely. She was a switchboard operator. Um, she comes home from work to an empty house in the Lincoln Heights area of Los Angeles. So mind you, this story does take place... 99.9% in Los Angeles, not Canada. So don't get it twisted. Two different, completely different places. Her son, Walter, which uh, she fucking hated him. She named him Walter. <laughs> right. She definitely hated him. He went to see a movie hours prior, but he never returned home. Typically, when I used to go to the movies as a young child, it was to make out with my boyfriend. And that's what we would go to the movies and do. And we would do bad stuff at the movie theater. We would get it on. And then one time I started to pull his jeans down and he said, that's not where my butthole is. It's on my knee. It's on my knee. (laughs) It's on my foot. It's on my mouth. (laughs) Oh, you're wrong. So instead of immediately saying, oh, my God, my fucking son is gone. He's missing. Walter, little Walter went to the movies. He's not returned home. He's gone. She waited five days before she turned the, she filed the missing person report with the police department. We're not even. (laughs) She didn't give a single shit. She said, I'm better off without this motherfucker. I'm going to wait five days. If he doesn't come home, God did what God was going to (laughs) do. Because, you know, God doesn't let bad stuff happen to good people. That's the way God operates. That's what I hear. (laughs) (laughs) and there were some immediate theories surrounding the whereabouts of little walter there was his mom was a single mother christine collins was a single mother to walter well dad was around but he was in prison see his father walter senior was an eight time not pro bowl pro bowler or super bowl champion (laughs) Or state champion. He was an eight-time convict with enemies in the area. Police speculated that an enemy of his father abducted the boy, or that he might have, or the boy might have run away. So the thing about Walter Senior is he was incarcerated in prison. His deal was he worked in the chow hall, and part of his job in the chow hall was not only dumping trays, but he had to turn inmates in in the chow hall when they were doing dumb shit and doing bad stuff. Mm. If they were doing things they weren't supposed to do. He would turn them in. He was a narc. He was a narc. So there was the belief that he narked on the wrong person for the last time. They got out of prison or they coordinated with, they, so they got their cell phones and their asses and they called, they made the phone call and they said, fucking little fucking Walter is going to see Charlie Chaplin or Little Mermaid. I don't know what, whatever was playing that day. Mm-hmm. Grab him, fuck the shit out of him and kill him, kill his ass. And they thought that little Walter might have been. He might have been abducted by some of these guys that had some some venomous. They had problems with uh, with Walter Senior. Okay, he was locked up in the joint. Walter Junior caught the brunt of it, but we don't know what happened yet. 
I'm going to tell you guys what happened, and you're going to find out. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, Christine, she worked feverishly, and I use that word loosely because she waited five goddamn days. <laughs> <laughs> she worked feverishly with law enforcement to investigate the disappearance of her young son, Walter. Plenty of people reported seeing the child in various places all around the city. My, mind you, these sightings that these uh, people were, were calling in, these, uh, these neighbors, these people in the neighborhood, they were calling in some really weird sightings. These were not run-of-the-mill, like, hey, I saw him walk into the gas station. This one gas station, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, one neighbor saw him on the corner of Pasadena and North Avenue that evening, just fucking walking around. Just hanging out? No big deal on that one. There was a gas station attendant in the nearby city of Glendale that reported seeing Walter's dead body wrapped up in newspaper with only his head visible on the back of a car. <laughs> Damn, they mummied his ass. <laughs> 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 fucking paper mache him. He's prairie dogging out of the fucking <laughs> <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> Only his head was hanging out. The fucking paper mache cocoon. But they didn't even uh, move. It didn't move the gas station attendant enough at the time to file a police report. <laughs> yeah, this is totally normal. <laughs> you know, I'm not real sure if I saw what I think I saw. <laughs> I don't know if that was a fucking dead baby or if that was some groceries. I think Walter was like nine years old or something like that. I, Man. I, I'd have to go back and double check that. Uh, he's around nine years old. So none of these sightings actually panned out, and Walter remained missing. So he's not been deemed dead at this point. He's still alive. He's wrapped up in newspaper with only his head hanging out. He's got a <laughs> really bad, really just the bad things going for him at this point. The case made national news at this point. The LAPD, who habitually fucking sucks dick, received right. hundreds of tips and leads from callers <clears throat> all over the country, and they all led to nowhere. Unfortunately, days turned into weeks, weeks into months. It's just a goddamn mess, Rob Dog. <sighs> Walter was still missing. Little Walt. Little Wally, Will Wally Walt. The L.A. Police Department was under increasing pressure to solve the case. The public was on fire, and they demanded a resolution. And the reason the public was so just heated about a resolution for this case is because the, the LAPD was under investigation for several corruption scandals, <laughs> and their inability to locate Walter Collins was rather embarrassing for the police department. Oh, you think? So the police department, they got this uh, police chief named J.J. Uh, something. I, 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 it's later on in the research, but they put their heads <laughs> together. They say, the only way we're going to get out of this shit is by finding this stupid fucking kid. So it was their life duty, all of them, to recover this lost child. At least the Los Angeles Police Department is very consistent. <laughs> <laughs> They're never good. In their, in their uh, just inferiority. And that being said, I'm sure there's a lot of really good guys that work at the, at the LAPD. Yeah. There's probably an immense, but there are a lot of shit bags. There's a, they have a long history of shit bags. They do, cool, cool, but good for cool stories and whatnot. Very. I think, uh, I want to say Training Day was LAPD. Hmm. But that's a good movie, yeah. man. I haven't seen that in forever. Ooh-wee. That is a good fucking movie. So we have uh, a couple months later, on May 16th, 1928, we have two brothers that went missing as well on their way home from a yacht club. Oh, fancy. I don't know what kind of 10 and 12-year-old is hanging out at a fucking <laughs> yacht club. These are some fancy little fuckers, though. Yeah, they are. Nelson Winslow, he was 10 years old. His brother, Lewis, those, those definitely sound like rich names. And then they really do. Nelson Winslow and my brother, Lewis Winslow, we would like to join your yacht club. Have you ever been in a yacht club? I have not. I haven't either. I don't think I've ever been on a yacht before. I've been in a houseboat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a houseboat. I like hollow on the river. That's like a trailer. <laughs> over the lake. A water trailer. <laughs> it's a water trailer. It's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> So at this point, we got two other missing kids, Nelson Winslow and his brother, Lewis. The Winslow parents, they started receiving some very strange letters in the mail. One letter stated they were going to Mexico. Hmm. The other said that they wanted to stay missing for, a lo for as long as possible to gain fame. So the Winslow parents at this point, they think these kids are still alive. You know, they're, hmm. they're out there doing their thing. I got the one letter that says we're going to fucking Mexico. We just want to see how far we can get. Ten and twelve years old. I'm still looking for them little fuckers. I'm not saying all right. Yeah. 
They got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of fucking bad uh, kids doing bad things, this is funny. We were, uh, I was at your house over the weekend, yeah, and I was fucking sloshed right <clears throat> when I was leaving. And I walk into the garage, mm-hmm. and all the kids there, yeah, are holding beer in the garage, <laughs> closed, closed beers, bottles, yeah, closed, closed cans. cans of beer, PBR, really nasty shit, yeah. And uh, the only, not all the kids. I'm too drunk to remember. I just remember that I saw it. And I laughed really hard. I get it. Yeah. I knew that it wasn't. It wasn't anything bad. They were just being something I would have done when I was a kid. So yeah. it really made me laugh. And uh, we got home. We went to McDonald's after that. After I just eaten at your house naturally, and we went to McDonald's. <laughs> and we got home, and I talked to my oldest daughter, and I said, "Were you out there drinking the fucking beer?" <laughs> I was pretending like I was mad at her. She said, no, I didn't even hold any beer. And I said, why are you drinking that cheap ass shit? <laughs> that can's a PBR. Yeah, it's definitely not mine. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I didn't. Uh, one of your sons. I won't Probably s- Colton. Uh, no. Carter? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she said, Carter offered me a beer. I said no. And he <laughs> Carter offered you a beer, <laughs> like he was being better. serious. Oh no, it gets better. He said <laughs> Carter offered me a beer, and I said no. And he said, "Okay, girly, I'm gonna get you a white claw." <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he was out there surfing. Beers. He even knows. <laughs> he knows the girl turned out a beer. He said, "Okay, girly, I'm gonna get you a white claw." <laughs> He's playing bartender. <laughs> laughing so fucking hard God damn it i said next time someone offers you a white claw you kick him in the fucking balls <laughs> you fucking take it <laughs> he knew what he was doing man hey he man was, he was slinging oh god i, I don't know what uh, uh what coined my memory of that i'm putting him up for adoption when no I get it's home. good i loved it i loved every second of it at this point the police did not connect the two disappearances together the 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 brothers and the missing Walter. Now, Walter, he had such a miserable first name. They just said, we're going to let him fucking, he's gone. We're not going to try and recover him. Yeah, too far gone. He's just dead. And with uh, none of these connections, there there was another disappearance, and there was no connection made with this one either. They uh, There was the uh, body of a headless Latino boy that they found in La Puinta in February. Damn. And with none of these cases, the the police were unable to make the connection. There was a neighbor's complaint about a man mistreating a boy at his poultry farm that did not appear relevant either. So on this chicken coop farm, an anonymous neighbor made a report that one of the uh, ranchers, who was Nelson, was okay. was mistreating one of the boys on the ranch, who was Sanford, and it didn't. It didn't gain much credence, and the police didn't do a thorough job of that investigation either. They just kind of said, oh, okay. no way. They're chicken ranchers. We don't fucking care. We're not goddamn chicken ranchers. I don't even think the police go to Wineville in California. Sounds like one of those places that's way out there. It's pretty close to L.A. Oh, is it? Okay. It's far enough out there that it's, yeah. it's not L.A. Hmm. It's not Wineville anymore. They changed their fucking name after this shit. We'll get to that here in a little bit, too. Okay, <laughs> this is when it starts to get really good. Finally, the police catch a huge break. In August of 1928, five months after Walter went missing, five months after he went to the movies and never came home, a child claiming to be Walter was found in DeKalb, Illinois. That's a long way away from Kansas, That's dude. That's a weird-ass city name. The police were relieved as well since they were unable to find... Walter, they had received a lot of criticism from the media and from people in the community because they couldn't find this kid, this police chief, uh, JJ, whatever. He was relieved that this kid, Walter, had turned himself in, albeit in Illinois. How did he get all the way to Illinois as such a young child? Who knows? But he, nonetheless, the, the police department, they were completely relieved. Um, Christine rushed to the train station. She actually had to pay to uh, for his transportation back home <laughs> the police didn't pay for that they she had to pay to have walter i guess trolleyed back home on the, on the <laughs> trolley on the train i don't even know what <laughs> what do you call when you're riding a train you just you can't call it fly back home you just yeah i don't know you trolleyed on home <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty sounds good right, yeah i don't know <laughs> 
Oh, man. So she pays to have him trolleyed home. She rushes to the train station to meet her son. Only the child that stepped onto the platform and called her Ma was not Walter. So the thing about yeah. Walter, Walter was very proper and respectful to his mother. It was always, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, mother, no, mother. Then this little yes, shithead. Yes, mother. This little shithead hops off the train and says, how you doing, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ma! What you doing, Ma? You got some big old fat tatties on you, Ma. What's up, mother? You got a lot bigger tatties than my last Ma. <laughs> so she's thinking, oh, what in the <laughs> fuck is this thing? <laughs> Ma. Hey, Ma. She told, she immediately told, hey, uh, Ma, I'm trying to get my dick sucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a fucking coffee and a uh, Virginia Slim. Let me get a bag of Fonyons. <laughs> Fonyons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hey, Ma, look, look, I got some hair on my nipples. <laughs> Ma, God damn, I shit my pants on the trolley, Ma. She immediately told L.A. Police Department Captain J.J. Jones this this was not her son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although he'd been gone all that time. Who is this man? He would have theoretically grown up a little bit. <laughs> so what did Captain J.J. Jones do? <laughs> he recommended that she bring him home anyway and try him out. <laughs> Like he's a well, you got fucking 90 days. If you don't like it within 90 days, you will take them back. Oh, my God. So every time I go to Verizon, like, you got, uh, you can bring it back. You got two weeks to bring it back. If you don't like it, bring it back. Okay. We'll make it a restock fee. <laughs> and she goes, he used to say, uh, let me get a bagel with uh, everything. Uh, let me get some cream cheese on the. She said, this is not my fucking kid. <laughs> this little fuckhead right here is not my son. And she goes to the police. She goes to J.J. Jones. She said, this little fuckhead is not mine. And J.J. is like, he is under the pressure of the world. He knows his job is on the line. <laughs> he knows he's got the entire community watching him. He hit her with a 30-day in-home in trial. He says, <laughs> Hey, dude, listen, just try him out. I know you may not like him. There's a lot of things about kids that people don't like, but this one right here, he's a good fucking kid. He changed a little bit while he was gone. Try him out. You might like him. You might not like him, but he is your son. Take him home. Just give him a try out of him. So she she relents, and she takes this. Oh, my gosh. Come she on. She takes this kid home. Jeez. They dismissed her. The police said that she was uh, suffering from hysterics, not thinking clearly after her significant trauma. So, Christine, she obliged. She took the little, little shit home. Well, he said, uh, hey, Ma, where are you fucking going? I'm tired of this being this train station. Well, Walter's teacher, so she gets them home. They get back into their, uh, their routine, and she says, all right, you little fuck. You got to go back to head. You go back to school. They send him to school, and the teacher says, Sweetheart, this is not Walter. <laughs> this is not the fucking kid that disappeared a few months ago. Dude, what the fuck? So even the teacher's like, no. The dentist, then she takes him to the dentist. You okay? Yeah, my bad. Oh, okay. You're just putting your wig back on. Yeah, man, I had to cool mm. off. This thing's hot. Yeah. She takes him to the dentist, and she wants the dentist to compare dental records between the new Walter and the old Walter. Like she already fucking knows. Oh, yeah, like, she does. No, but she's not convinced yet. It gets so much better. Jeez. Uh, the dentist said, no, this is not the same kid. These teeth are completely different. There's no way in hell this is the same. This, what has happened to his mouth could not happen <laughs> in a mouth. This is not the same fucking kid. You need to take this kid back to PetSmart, fucking re get to return, f you know, hit the return to sender on this guy. This is not the correct kid. You got the wrong fucking kid right here. So the dentist, even after that, she says, okay, you might be right. But there's a couple more things I want to try before I take this kid back. Because the whole entire time, this kid's like, hey, Ma, why are you trying to get rid of me? For? <laughs> hey, Ma, uh, you, why are you fucking with me? Uh, I thought you loved me, baby. You know, keep me around the house. I can help you do some shit. So the dentist says, no way. This is not the same kid. You got to you gotta, you gotta do something. So, why is it so funny to think of this kid as like a, like a really short like New Yorker? I just like, think he's a midget. <laughs> yeah, like a New York he's man. A midget. He's you a 47-year-old midget. You see that video where I, I don't remember what it was, but it looked like it was in some inner city, and it's like a school bus, and the, the driver throws what looks like a kid off the bus, and everybody outside is going crazy. It's a midget. They're, yeah, they're like, hey, what are you doing throwing that kid? Out? And that, they, they're going crazy. <laughs> and they pick up the kid to make sure he's okay, and it's a, it's just a fucking dwarf. Full-blown full midget. Full, yeah. He's, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, shit, that ain't no kid. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, but it's just like that. <laughs> so she takes him to the dentist. The dentist says, no, absolutely not. You got the wrong kit. She says, well, there's a couple more things I want to check out. Before Walter vanished, he received a new puppy. Okay. So Walter started to bond with his puppy. He really loved this dog a lot. They brought the puppy, the dog, back to Walter, and the dog was very excited to see the new Walter. So then she said, you know what? <laughs> Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. <laughs> Maybe I am wrong, and maybe they are right. Maybe I do have the right Walter. I love, I love how it came down to the dog's decision, We're not, not the fucking dentist and all the medical records. So she starts to say, <laughs> she starts to lean. She starts to say, all right, this is the guy. This is Walter. The dog likes him. He's I can get along with this ma thing. But then after school one night, she says, uh, Walter, go hop in the fucking bathtub. It's time for a bath. Walter gets in the bathtub. She goes in there to bathe him to clean it up. She finds out that the kid in the bathtub has an uncircumcised ah, penis. Ah, that'll do it. Walter has a circumcised that'll do it. penis. So here we are. The lady, she loses Walter. Walter goes away. The lady, she's heartbroken. She's lost her son. The police department comes forward. They say, lady, we found your son. They give the son back to her. She says, this is not my son. The police say, oh, oh, contraire, my friend. This is your son. Keep him. Take him home. Try him out. She takes him <laughs> home. She tries him out. The dentist checks his mouth out. The dentist said, there's no fucking way in hell. This is the kid that you had before. This is a different kid. They've given you the wrong kid. Man. She says, okay, okay, okay. Let's try the puppy. Let's see if the puppy reacts to the kid. The puppy reacts to the kid positively because mm -hmm. puppies like children. Sure. So she says, okay, this is my son. And then the fatal flaw. No <laughs> coat on the dick. He had a, he was, the the fake imposter Walter had a jacket, he was a pig in a blanket. No helmet. The kid that or was the, helmet. her real Walter. Didn't have a helmet. Did not have a helmet. In regards to my family, my older brother, they didn't circumcise him. My younger brother, they circumcised him. Me, they cut my penis completely off. That's what they did in my family. So they just give you a half, a half cut. <laughs> they give you a half fade. No, they cut it off completely. They gave you a fade. We look so closely all alike. You know, we're 10, fucking 12 years apart, whatever. <laughs> Your dick's just all head. But the, no, it's not. It looks like a second belly button. Well, if your head was like that long. <laughs> It just looked like a, yeah. <laughs> that would be so fucking ugly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have the little Dairy Queen curl. I'd rather have the butthole in my... <laughs> yeah, the butthole in your throat, mouth. Yeah, or my yeah. knee, wherever. Oh, man. And she says, back the fucking truck up. So she takes him to the police department, naked as a jaybird, and says, this is not my son's dick. <laughs> Look at this kid's dick. Look at this, <laughs> this kid's This is not my kid's dick. dick. Three weeks later, after the bathing incident, Christine returned... To the police station with the mystery boy and all the evidence that she had compiled to com to prove that this new kid was not her son. Hey, Ma, where are you taking me? Hey, Ma, ever since you looked in my dick in the <laughs> bathtub, things been really weird around here. You couldn't stop staying. You ever seen a guy with a big old setup, big old piece of foreskin on his wiener before? Don't oh, act man. like you ain't ever seen this wiener before, Ma. <laughs> Look at it. Just look at my wiener. You know it's me. <laughs> That's my favorite. Like, I read stories about husbands and wives cheating and stuff, and the the wife would be like, I know he was cheating because the woman that he was cheating with told me that he had a small penis. <laughs> <laughs> God fucking damn. Come join us. <laughs> Welcome to the club, brother. Unfortunate chain of events right yeah. there. That she takes him to the police station. She says, I, 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 Amazon return. This is Coles. I'm bringing you yeah. back. You're going straight fucking. And J.J. Jones, <clears throat> the police captain, accused of her of being a negligent parent, a deadbeat parent, and that she was just trying to uh, skate on her parental duties that he said, you know what, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I went clear across the country to find your son. I found him. I bring him back to you. And now you don't even want him just because he grew a little bit of foreskin <laughs> on his wiener. That is a really bad reason to give a kid back that is your kid. 
Just like dick. It's like a chameleon tail. And she <laughs> says. <A> lizard tail. <laughs> it just grows back. <laughs> She's got a regenerating foreskin. Regenerative foreskin. <laughs> Man, that'd be inconvenient. If you have regenerative foreskin, <laughs> send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. We'd like to hear all the hard-hitting facts of your. It's like a fucking nail, man. They had to like, just clip it every like couple of weeks before yeah, it got it's too like long. like a fucking dog nail. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta cut his foreskin. Oh, God. It's getting flappy over the top. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she brings him back, and the police, they say, no, no, no. You're out of your goddamn gourd. And they all they make a move citing a Code 12, and they okay. send her, Christine, to the Los Angeles General Hospital psychiatric unit, and oh she was gosh. committed. At the time, a Code 12 is something that the police could use more, uh, more oftentimes than not on women to have them committed psychiatrically uh, for no reason. Wow. Yeah, it was a fucking dirty game, buddy. It was an ordinance that the police could use, and it, they really abused it. In this case, they really abused it. <laughs> Sounds like it. While Christine was held against her will in the psych ward, a handwriting expert determined that the boy's handwriting samples did not match Walter's. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, J.J. Jones like, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> fucked up on this one. Oops. Oh man! <laughs> if if it were 2021, she would be a billionaire on on that on that lawsuit to recoup her uh, her name and her money. The imposter child, not Walter, <clears throat> finally admitted that he was really Arthur Hutchins Jr., a 12 year old from Iowa who had run away from home after his mother died. When police in DeKalb, Illinois questioned arthur they asked him if he knew who walter collins was arthur initially said no but after he realized that his uh, resemblance to walter meant he could get away from his father and his cruel mm. stepmother plus get a free trip to california he told the police that he was the missing boy so he, he watched a lot of uh, movies and stuff yeah there was a cowboy at the time a cowboy actor i i, I didn't write his name down but the boy really fancied the cowboy actor uh, it wasn't uh <clears throat> no one that I've ever heard of before. Okay. But the boy, he was, uh, you know, he really liked this cowboy. And he said, you know what? I can get a Hollywood on this free trip. All I got to do is pretend to be Walter. All I got to do is hold my foreskin back for a few days, and then <laughs> no one will ever know the difference. <laughs> Think about this. He's got this fucking plan all planned out. He's got everything. He's Everything's working f perfectly. He's got the puppy in his hands. The puppy, <laughs> finally everything has fallen into place. Christine has relented. She says, okay, this is my fucking kid. Then you have the slight oversight that she knows what the boy's wiener looks like, and your wiener doesn't look like his wiener. <laughs> Imagine making it that far, scot-free. Sold out by the dick again. And that's the part that slips through. Your little bitty foreskin. Poor kid. What a way to go. Uh, after a full 10 days, this is, a, yeah, 10 days after Arthur's confession, Christine was released from the psych ward. She won $10,800 in court for false imprisonment, but Jones never paid her. The Damn. LAPD suspended Jones for just a few months before permanently reinstating him. Huh. In summer of 1928, Jesse Clark, who was Sanford's sister, so we're going back to the Canadian chicken farmers right now, at the Wineville Chicken Coop, mm -hmm. Sanford, who was the boy, the younger one that was brought from Canada, uh, she paid a visit to the ranch. So this was Jesse Clark was Gordon's niece. She became suspicious that the child did not attend school. She paid an unexpected visit to the Northcott Ranch. Sanford told his sister something chilling. His uncle Gordon, who was the, the the older of the two, habitually raped him. Armed with this information, Jesse, the, the girl, went back to Canada and told her mother, Winifred Clark, who then contacted the American consul who informed the Los Angeles Police Department. Damn. On August 31st, 1928, the police in L.A. sent an immigra two immigration officers, Judson Shaw and George Skullhorn, to Wineville to check on Sanford at the uh, the ch the chicken ranch, Gort at the time when the two um, <clears throat> the two of them showed up, there was two uh, I guess they're immigration officers. I didn't, I didn't really think they had 
immigration officers back then. Yeah, but it's weird. Apparently they did. Apparently there's an immigration <coughs> crisis going on on our Amer- uh, southern border right now in America. Oh, you think? Uh, that's completely whatever. <laughs> that's a thing. We'll circle back to that a little bit later. Gordon, the fucking creepy-ass chicken farmer who we talked about in the beginning of the episode that was, had to go build a farm outside the city because he was fucking fucking everybody, was driving down the road when his mother, Sarah, w- he was with his mother at the time. We haven't talked about Gordon's mother yet, Sarah Louise Gordon. They saw the officers approaching, and they hid out. On I guess there was some brush there. There was like a little uh, shed on the side of the road. They hid there until the officers passed, and then they hightailed it back to Canada. They left uh, the young the San, they left Sanford there, and they left Cyphus, who was <laughs> the dad that had built the chicken farm. So he still lived there on the farm. Heck yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Cyphus and uh, Sanford were the, were the only ones there. And the, the immigration officers found Sanford at the ranch, along with Gordon's father, Cyphus, and they took both of them into custody immediately. While awaiting deportation, Sanford's conscience grew heavy, and he told the jailers everything he knew. So a uh, little 12-year-old Sanford, all the shit that he'd been through, he was just trying to enjoy life, living in Canada, his uncle comes to visit, and the uncle says, I'll really use somebody to help on a chicken farm back in California if you don't mind giving me this fucking boy. He's got a butthole on his knee. He's not going to be able to do anything with his life. <laughs> and that'd be very inconvenient. You don't know. Don't knock it. Like my mom always said, don't knock it until you try it. I guess. <sighs> I uh, No true. I always say, anytime someone says something, I always say, I'll try anything twice. And they always like, ah, and they stop. I'm like, what the fuck, man? That guy's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we are at the point now they're, they're awaiting deportation. Sanford, the little 12, he, his conscience, it's, it's heavy. He starts to tell the, tell the jailers everything. He explained how Gordon raped him and how he kidnapped other little boys and raped them as well. Hmm. He said to police that Gordon, along with his mother, even killed some of the boys and forced him to murder them also. The cops showed Sanford photographs of several missing boys. He identified Nelson and Lewis Winslow, the fancy kids that were returning home from the, the yacht club. He also was able to identify Walter Collins. He also recalled a time that Gordon kept a Mexican boy in the chicken coop and killed him as well. Man. When the police re- realized they found the headless body of the Mexican boy seven months prior in the nearby town of Punta, Punta, Punta or Punta, Punta's pussy, Puente, uh, you Puente. Know, Puente, there you go, Puente, they called for Punta's pussy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. For the immediate extradition and arrest of Gordon Stewart Northcott and his mother. Gordon and his mother were arrested September 20th, 1928 and extradited to Riverside County, California three weeks later. Gordon initially admitted to killing nine boys. Damn. At one point, he even admitted to killing around 20 boys. So anywhere from nine to 20 different boys that he, he said he that's, killed. That's a big difference. It is, but he kept on flopping back and forth. One day they would go in to talk to him, and he would say, oh, I'm real sorry about killing them 20 fucking boys. And then an hour later, after they're done cleaning their foreskin, they would go back in there, and they'd be like, hey, well, we're going to keep on talking about what we were talking about before. And he's like, I got no goddamn idea what you're talking about. So he had some debilitating mental health issues. He had some real problems, and he kind of, and, and it really showed through the investigation and through the, the the lead up to the end of the trial. In a in a letter, in a handwritten letter later, he made a essentially confessed. He only copped to the murder of the Mexican, who he sometimes referred to as Alvin Gothia or Juan Hernandez. So, in in the handwritten confession, that's the only one that he said that he that he committed was mm-hmm. the the Hispanic boy. Gordon blamed all of the killings on his father. Cyphus, and he claimed to know nothing of the uh, of Walter or the uh, fancy kids from the yacht club. He said he didn't know anything about them in the confession. Bummer. <clears throat> now, one thing to to note here: there was a lot of incest going on at this fucking chicken ranch. Hell yeah, of course there was. So the uncle Gordon was fucking the little kid Sanford, who just got whisked away from Canada to work on a chicken ranch. Gordon was also fucking his mom, Sarah. He was having sex with her. Okay. And w- the whole entire time Gordon was growing up himself, he was being sodomized by his father, Cyphus. Man. 
What a way to go right there, buddy. There's a lot of... <laughs> That's a whole lot of fucking... <laughs> uh, butt smacking, ball flapping, doing the do if you yeah. catch my drift right there. And I'm not talking about that Baja Blast. I'm talking about that real do-do. <laughs> feel me? I feel you. Yeah. So he claimed that... Gordon claimed that he had an incestuous relationship with his mother and that his father sodomized him in his youth. Who? <laughs> Sodomy is when you use your penis and you put it in another man's butthole. <laughs> Historically, sexual perpetrators tend to start in untreated sexual abuse victims. But Gordon was a pathological liar. And we, we've already noted that, how he said at first, he's like, I killed nine guys. And they leave and they come back and he's like, I killed 20 guys. And they take a little coffee break and they come back again. He's like, I didn't fucking kill anybody. So he's a pathological liar. He lied about everything. They couldn't quite put their thumb on him and figure out what the fuck he really meant and what he didn't mean. So hmm. there was a, it was not an easy investigation. He, and there was no conclusion that could be drawn on what what crimes he actually committed. Gordon's father begged the court for leniency, stating that his son was insane, which we can certainly tell that. You think? He would admit to killing Walter and then take it back. He confessed to murdering, murdering the Winslow boys and, they, and then claimed that he'd never even seen them. Hmm. Sanford, on the other hand, the 12-year-old boy who was getting his fucking butt obliterated on the ranch... <laughs> took full accountability, and his story never wavered. Sanford led investigators to burial sites on Northcott property, which was the Wineville chicken coop, the, the, the chicken ranch there. In contrast, Gordon took them on wild goose chases. <laughs> How fitting of us to start this episode with a swan beating on people's doors. It's all full circle. <laughs> if, uh, so what the uh, Sanford would take, and he would tell the police, say, okay, I know where this body's buried. I know where this one's buried. Uh, I don't really remember where that one's at. So then they pegged dumbass Gordon. I said, hey, these all these fucking kids you killed, where are they at? And then Gordon would be like, I can take you straight to your fucking bodies if you just take me back to the ranch. So they'd take him out of the jail, and they would take him to the ranch, and they'd say, all right, show us where the bodies are at. And then he would just, I know, I put him around here somewhere. And they'd just walk around the ranch for fucking hours. With, and they wouldn't discover any bodies. And then uh. Gordon would be like, oh, well, I guess I fucked up. I don't know. And they would beat the shit out of him and then haul <laughs> him back to the jail. I don't know that he was beat. and the, I am sure that he was beat during those instances. But if you, sure. in 1928, if you take correction officers on a wild goose chase like that. You're going to get beat. <laughs> in the California desert, wherever it's at, you're going to get the fucking, you're going to get the shit beat off of you. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to fucking die. You're going to get beat off. <laughs> you're going to get beat off so good. <laughs> you get beat off right in the desert. Oh, Underneath yeah. the pale moonlight. <laughs> when Paisley's on the phone and someone, she's talking to someone on the phone. Paisley's four. She just turned four. Uh, that's my daughter. She, if people start talking crazy to her, she'll hang up on them. <laughs> You start saying, my mom starts saying shit she doesn't like, she'll hang up on her. Yeah, she'll hang up on my dad. She got little friends that'll FaceTime her and stuff. Mm -hmm. She'll fucking hang up on him. <laughs> doesn't matter. And then after she does it, she just stares at the screen. She goes, I hang you up. <laughs> Savage as fuck. I know. Just <laughs> stares at the screen and says, I hang you up. <laughs> Not, I hung up on you. She says, I hang you up. <laughs> it makes me so fucking happy. I hate it. Oh, she said piss the other day. And it, <laughs> no, I, I, little people cussing is my oh, it is my the bane of my existence. It it makes me so weak. Anytime I hear a little kid cuss, it fucking hurts me. My nephew's the worst with that. <laughs> the um, one that from my yeah, brother's son. Yeah, I didn't hear him cuss over the weekend. No, but he he has his. He has his moments. There was this random kid that was driving. He was in the a car. He was on a bike or something. He was riding bike, and I think he was like maybe like ten or eleven. And he was riding by and was just talking shit to Alan's to my brother's kids. And he was said something and called him like a he called the kids like bitches or something like that. And little Lakin, who's like four, he's about the same age as Paisley. He was like, "You what do you say?" He was like. He said, you son of a bitch. <laughs> he said, Dad, he called me bitch, so I call him bitch back. <laughs> Kids cussing is my favorite. Oh, man, it really is. It's so funny because it's, it's just like so – it's wholesome. Like, it is, <laughs> is meant where it comes like – They don't meant. know what they're doing. It so much meaning to it, but <laughs> little meaning at all. 
Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> now the they they go on this wild goose chase where Gordon says, "I know where I hit all the fucking bodies," but he didn't know where he hit the bodies. Finally, they had enough. Sh- they had enough of his shit, and they went through with the trial. He was found guilty of the murders, and he was sentenced to the gallows at Ooh. San Quentin Prison. Oh damn! And uh, this all this time, his mom Sarah, mm-hmm. who he was fucking. They had the incestuous relationship going on. Yeah, they did. She wasn't going to let her son go down without fighting for him. She claimed that one day she was visiting the ranch from Los Angeles because, mind you, the dad, Cyphus, built the ranch for Gordon because he couldn't live in Los Angeles anymore because the sexual assault allegations are building up against him. <laughs> he had to leave a whole fucking city. <laughs> Governor Cuomo from New York, he has a lot of sexual assault things against him we let him keep on hanging out there in new york right so different time different speeds weird she uh she claimed that while she was visiting the ranch one day from los angeles gordon refused to allow her near the chicken coop which roused her suspicion Hmm. when she finally found her way inside the chicken coop she discovered walter collins sleeping on a cot gordon told her how he abused the boy and Sarah took it upon herself. She decided that she could not allow the little boy to live and go to the police. At that point, Sarah devised a plan where Gordon, Sanford, and herself would take turns beating little Walter with the blunt Damn. end of an axe until he was dead. Her blow from the axe, she claims, was the, was the blow that killed Walter and, and ended his life. Sarah Louise Gordon received a life sentence for her confession. She served 12 years of her sentence and paroled in 1940. She went on to pass away in 1944. Drop dead, bitch. Never come back, you yeah. stinky fucking gash. Thank God. On October 1st, 1930, Gordon Stewart Northcott agreed to meet with Christine Collins, which Christine was little Walter's uh, mother, to finally tell her everything he could about her son's disappearance. So the mom is going to this thinking, oh, my God, I'm finally going to get some closure in little Walter's life. This fucking psychopath is going to tell me what he did to my boy. And she goes to this meeting because she turned the foreskin kid back in. (laughs) I don't want him no more. She had two sons. So her real Walter, she thinks she's going to meet this psychopath, and he's finally going to say, okay, you know, I abducted him here at this time, and this is what happened to him. She's going for closure for her heart, man, Mm because she's still she's reeling. You know, you need that as a parent. She's hurting. So they agreed to meet and he agreed that he would tell her everything that she wanted to know about her son's disappearance. Only when she got there, he insisted that he had never met Walter. The next day he stumbled. Well, during that same meeting between the two, eventually he just turned his back to Christine and wouldn't even speak to her or look at her. (laughs) So imagine the emotional fucking roller coaster that she was going through. Yeah, big time. Thinking that she was going there to find out what happened to her beloved son, Walter. Then nothing. Then this guy just turns his back and says, I'm not talking to you. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, And like we cited before, he was a bit of a pathological liar. Everyone thought he was a fucking psychopath, which he was. Mm. Uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's kind of evident, but on... Let's see here. The next day after the meeting, he stumbled up 13 gallows steps, <laughs> crying and pleading for his life. So that whole entire day, the last day of him being on death row, he pleaded. He was screaming. He was begging anyone that would listen. Please fucking free me. Please don't kill me. This guy did not want to die. They didn't fuck around with their death sentences back in the uh, 20s. You going to get your fucking neck <laughs> stretched out is what you're gonna do back in the 40s i guess this was now uh no this was 1930 okay yeah still man that's like shit <clears throat> yeah you, you hit death row you're still you're still in death row <laughs> right. for like 40 years now you know i've read a lot of uh death row accounts from other countries where the death row inmates have no idea what day their their date of death is planned for so they're there in death row and the co walking by could be you getting your lunch delivered uh-huh. or it could be that motherfucker marching up to put you in handcuffs to take you to the electric chair. Damn. Yeah. Just that is eerie, dude. Can you imagine just being like just fucking with someone just like all day long. So they're being an asshole and you're like, tomorrow's your day, buddy. It's going to be, then tomorrow comes and you don't get it. And that's like, Oh, next, the next day is your day. You just walk up to their cell and it really, it's like two years. Start staring, but nobody knows. That's yeah. the thing is there's only a couple people in the know and they just, 
you just stare at him into the cell and just be like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I used to do that whenever, uh, <laughs> when I worked at the prison, what I would do is I would walk to a, a, a cell in isolation uh-huh. and I would just stare into the cell at the inmate and he'd be like, what? And I'd just keep on staring at him and there was nothing they could do. <laughs> just, just stare. And then I'd start to take my clothes off and I would just cry. <laughs> There was another. Uh, I was on. I was on Reddit, and someone said that we, our former CEOs, that all we talk about is beating the shit out of people. I don't think we've ever personally talked about. I don't. <laughs> I don't ever remember like us talking about beating the shit, beating the shit out of someone. It was always like people were already beating the shit out of people when I got there. I oh never, yeah. I just never like beat the shit out of somebody. Yeah, I only had like. I only had one or two uses of force. And that was just from handcuffing one guy, because you anytime you have to do anything like that, you have to do use of force because you have to yeah. control their hands. And then another guy I did suplex because he rushed in on somebody else, so I had to get him out of the cell. So I had two or three a day when I worked there. <laughs> pretty much how my time went. But look, look, look at this way. Rob was in a county jail, so much DUIs all the way up to murderers, and I was in a maximum security disciplinary camp in the state of Ohio. Uh, I was in there with guys that were never getting out, guys yeah. that had done, performed very bad things to kids, women, men. It didn't matter. They were murderers, rapists. I definitely saw some shit, but I never seeked it out. Yeah. I, I, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, if you lost a loved one to a violent act, like say, for instance, your grandfather was in a gas station getting some scratch-offs, and some guy, some thug comes in, smokes him in the back of the head, and then steals the cash register. Your grandpa had no business dying that day. And you're never going to get the closure you want on that situation. But rest assured that there are people like me and there's other guys that are still in the system that give these guys a very hard time. Mm-hmm. Not that they deserve a hard time, but it's called karma. When you take someone's life away and then you cower, you say, oh, I'll take, I'll plead out. I did it. What the fuck ever. I'm going to be in jail for the rest of my life. They don't have to face the consequences of their actions. Much like TJ Lane from Chardon Falls, Ohio. This motherfucker came into our prison. He shot up a school and then he went a little red haired guy, a little redhead uh, dude named TJ Lane. He had, he went to court and he had a shirt on. He took a shirt off in court and it said killer on a shirt. He oh, was yeah. a maniacal I remember that. psychopath. Yeah. Okay. And he looked at the family of the kids that he had killed and he looked and they said, Is there anything you want to say, Thomas Jane, Thomas Lane, before you're taken to print? And he said, The right hand that used the trigger to kill your kids is now the right hand used to jack off to the thought of it. He said that to their families right there in the court. And I saw that in the news mm. on the, the internet. I said, I fucking hope that dude comes to my prison. He took innocent children's lives away from their family. And then someone gets on Reddit and says, oh, they talk about beating the shit out of inmates. Well, that guy came to the prison that I worked at. And the first time that I was able to get my fucking hands on him, I took him <laughs> into a bathroom. Maybe. Well, let's say, you know, maybe this happened. And I said, cocks and socks, motherfucker. He said, what are you talking about? I said, get naked, bitch. Because you're allowed to get, take them and strip search them anytime you want. They have no rights. You can just pull them aside, strip search them, whatever. I said, cocks and socks. He said, what are you talking about? I said, show me your fucking ass and balls. Get naked. <laughs> Jesus. Take your clothes off. And I was I was, like, I was vulgar like that. I said, show me your fucking cock. It was, I was like, I was in the fucking, I was in it right in that moment, dude. And he said, no, I'm not doing that. I said, take your clothes off before I break your fucking face. He took his clothes off. He gets naked. Well, he started with his body. It was always really weird when the inmates would take their pants off in their underwear before they took their shirts off. It just made things really awkward. I, I, when someone gets takes their clothes off, you expect them to take their shirt off first. This fucking dude took his pants and his underwear off, and he's just standing there in a shirt. And the entire time, my plan... That is kind of weird if you think about it. It was really weird. Who pulls their dick out before their tits? I remember it it very vividly. And my plan was, when I took him in there, I said, I'm going to strip search this guy. I'm a happy Gilmore's ass. As soon as he pulls the shirt up over his head, I'm going to proceed to beat the living fucking fire out of this dude. He took his pants and his 
underwear off for. He's just his wieners hanging there. I don't even remember if it was. It wasn't a very good looking wiener. It was not a very <laughs> impressive wiener. I do remember that. But the second, and I still followed along with it. The second that he got his shirt up over his head, I took the the, the strength of God, and I punched this guy in the stomach so hard that his I saw. When I punched him in the stomach, it lifted his back end up, and I saw his fucking butthole up in front of my face. How <laughs> fucking hard Christ. I punched this dude in the stomach. And I pulled my man down alarm because I was in a fight with an inmate at that point, and all the other officers come running. Everyone piles in there, and they're like, did he hit you? Did he hit you? And I'm like, Marr! I didn't say yes or no. They're like, he hit him. And they just started fucking beating this dude, just stomping his guts out, beating the shit out of him. And then that guy got taken to isolation. He said, I don't want to be in this prison. The warden came through. He said, you got to get me the fuck out of here. I was here for two hours, and these I was worried about the inmates killing me. These guards about fucking killed me on the first trip down the hallway to the chow hall. And they, they did. They whisked him out of there. They took him to a protective custody camp uh, in northern Ohio somewhere. Within just a few weeks of being there, after he made it out of isolation back in a general population, the fucking dude escaped because they took him to a protective custody camp. Oh, my gosh, are you camp. serious? With uh, inmates in protective custody, uh, a minimum security camp, all because he wanted to be away from the danger. All because the state wanted to lay down and just, oh, we'll, we'll take care of you. Even though he killed those fucking kids. They didn't want him to be, his life to be in jeopardy or in peril at, at a maximum security institution. So they took him to a light security camp and he escaped. So there, these families in northern Ohio, they're uh, f- finally get the closure of this animal being locked up. And they have, they, they can sleep peacefully at night. And then they hear on the news, T.J. Lane has escaped from prison. And then they have to relive the nightmare all over again, all because the, the fucking state wants to lay down to this dude and let him do whatever he wants. All because, eh, I'm sad, he got punched in the tummy. He got punched, like, I punched him in the stomach, but those guys, I'm, I think they might have broken his orbital socket. I know they did beat him within an inch of his life, but... For those families that um, lost their children, man, had their kids ripped from them in a school shooting, a senseless act, they would want to know that there were guys like me in the prison system that were fucking getting guys naked and beating the shit out of them. You would want to know if that was you. You would want to know that that it, you don't necessarily need to know, but you would want to know that, that that was happening. That they're just not sitting comfy and le- allowing themselves to, you know, have a nice comfy life. You say comfy or comfy? Because I come down his feet too, and I was done. <laughs> okay, we were done beating both. Me, I come down his feet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's it, and there's still even amongst convicts and prisoners. There's still oh, there is a code. There's a sure. code, and if he wouldn't have got it from he would have he would have gotten his gotten it regardless. His life would have been one held. way or the other. Yeah, yeah. And, and he eventually just kept on checking in. Oh, by checking in, I mean he wouldn't go in a general population yeah that's right? typically what they would do for something like that there's they're not putting guys like that. there was one guy that i remember i don't remember what his name was but it was a huge case back whenever and that, like i said i was 19 when i worked there so i don't really remember like most of the people that were there but it was a guy a man and a woman and they killed their two two-year-old one-year-old maybe huge case the first day that guy was brought out into transport to go to court he got just the inmates just jumped him because they really? put him in they put him in the general population transport Good for them. and as he was sitting there they beat the shit out of that dude well deserved yeah i'm pretty sure they well broke deserved. his jaw right before his court date, right before his court date <laughs> whatever but, happens i mean yeah it happens oh. well let's get back to the the wineville chicken coop murders i forgot we were even covering a story i don't even know <laughs> so he was he marched the 13 steps to the gallows crying the entire time when they put the uh, noose around his neck he requested to have a blindfold so he, he couldn't actually see the the noose going around his neck and he was screaming at the gallows pray for me pray for me someone pray save my soul he was executed uh he was 23 years old when he when he died sanford wesley northcott the the little teenager that lived on the ranch there served 23 months at whittier state school he made his way back to Canada and tried to forget the terrible events on his uncle's chicken ranch. <laughs> he worked hard and became an upstanding citizen who adopted two sons and refused to be defined as a criminal. Hmm. If any good came from these crimes, it surely is that Sanford, a victim as much as the children who died, 
triumphed over evil. Sanford passed away in 1991 after wow. 55 years of marriage at the age of 78. And like I said before, the town of Wineville, they wished to distance themselves from this crime as much as possible. And just two years after the actual murders, Wineville became what is now known as Mira Loma, California. That sounds like a California city. <laughs> Mira Loma. <laughs> it does. It really does. Arthur, you know, the, the ma, hey, ma, I got a foreskin. Though. Hey, uh, ma. The imposter kid, he went back <laughs> to live with his father and stepmother and attended <laughs> Iowa State Training School for Boys a rehabilitation program for juvenile delinquents. In 1933, he wrote that he impersonated Walter to escape his fucking bitch of a stepmother. Quote, A person doesn't realize what a hell this world can be at the hands of a stepmother that doesn't love or want you, he wrote. Though he failed to mention he was also running from his hometown police. What a fucking shithead. That summer, he was arrested for stealing, and when the police required that he check in with them once a week, he ran away to Illinois, describing himself as a boy adventurer. <laughs> Arthur Jeez. conceded that he owed Christine Collins in California an apology for his deceptive actions. As an adult, Arthur, imagine this, sold concessions at carnivals, worked as a horse trainer, and started a family before dying of a blood clot in 1954. Womp womp. They're all dead. That's the story of Wineville Chicken Coop murders. The boy adventurer. That's my superhero name. Uh, you're not going to believe this. The last time you gave me a bath, I had no foreskin. <laughs> this time, I will have a lot of it. <laughs> I will have a lot of foreskin. I have not trimmed my foreskin in quite a day, quite a long time. Every time I try and use my manscape ball trimmer on my foreskin, <laughs> it makes a lot of blood. <sighs> so what do you think of the Wineville Chicken Coop murders? Sir? Good time. All fun and games. Until, Until someone dies. Somebody dies dies or a lot of people died it's estimated that he killed upwards near 20 children that he actually killed upwards near 20 children they buried the uh i just want to i mean chickens got fucked <laughs> a lot of fucking chickens got <laughs> fucked in this one they buried the bodies with lime and it really it did its job it fucked yeah. quick lime it ate the bodies what's supposed to do so when they tried to recover the bodies of the ranch all they could really find were bits and pieces they couldn't fully uh you know get enough evidence to i guess pin down the specific bodies that they needed but nonetheless they were able to convict old garden and sentenced him to the gallows i think if i got sentenced to death i would want to go in the gallows yeah so all of you could watch me swing watch my fat carcass swing around like a dumpling yeah i mean they that, that used to be like entertainment for them back in the day they would it like was. fucking cheer and shit yeah it was Man. watching people die is a really nasty thing <laughs> it's pretty rough it is really rough yeah Okay, well, it's 9.30 here in uh, just north of Dayton, Ohio. We're here in the Ohio studios. We had a good time. Oh, yeah, always. I'm happy with, uh, I'm happy with the new live stream with the camera. So. It looks beautiful. It does. You guys can go check out the YouTube live stream. So if you wonder what we look like, some people, will, we've been at this for four years, and sometimes they'll stumble upon us on YouTube and they'll comment, oh, I didn't know you guys, like, we're real humans. Yeah, we're real fucking humans. I am. What if we were robots? Like I said, I'm about 280 pounds of just bent steel and sex appeal. (laughs) Rob Dog, much the same, doesn't weigh weigh nearly as much as I do. But nonetheless. About two stacks. About 50 stacks (laughs) between the two of us. (laughs) (laughs) We're five stacks between the two of us. (laughs) And not even a full dick between the two of us either. No. (laughs) All right, well, thanks for listening to this episode. We uh, Go check out, if you haven't, let me go give you the information real quick. There's a Brohio cruise coming up. Oh, yeah, sexy. If you would, they've already sold like 100 fucking rooms or something like that. It's completely Who, outrageous. Yeah, whoever shows up with the smallest and tightest swimming trunks, I will buy a beer for. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Make sure you show this to us. I want to see your giblets hanging out of the bottom of them. <laughs> I just want to see your giblets. <laughs> that too. You can call the vacation experts at 502-899-7700. You're going to talk to Robin Troop at extension 800 or Rachel Troop at extension 808. I know the price on the rooms have gone up about $10. That's because we've sold all the ones that reserve for us. Yeah. We've already sold the motherfucker out, but they said, you know what? And I don't even have a room yet. <laughs> no, neither do I. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. I might. Yeah, maybe. I think, uh, you know, I go on Wednesday to get my vaccine as well. Oh, I'm nice. Look vac- at you. Getting vaccinated on Wednesday. I need to get mine. 
I will let you know if it goes horrifically or if it goes well. If you just spontaneously combust, I think I'll wait. Yeah, who fucking cares? <laughs> Look at that babe right there. That's my girl right there. Lori Beth Denberg. The truth. All right, guys. Tell them the good news, Rob Dog. I have to take a shit, and I love you guys. <laughs> That wasn't a lie. I do have to shit pretty <laughs> <Okay>. bad. <laughs> you going to do it here or are you going to go home? I'm going to go home, man. Okay. <laughs> YouTube, I got to shit. Oh, oh, I forgot we're still on YouTube. Yeah, no, it's okay. I've been waiting. Any other oh. questions real quick before we go? Can you do Bill Wilkins' voice for cash app money? <laughs> you don't have to send me cash app money, but. No, no, no. Send money. Yeah. <laughs> We are, we're poor. My name's Bill Wilkins, and I'm 73 years old, and I died my own shit. That was a good one. Yep. I felt it. Yeah. I can really feel it when I do it deep. <laughs> feel it down in your nuggets. Love you, bros. Animal fights. Animal fights. Oh, Rob shit. has to fucking poop too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you, too much pressure. We got to think we about these ones. Save it for another time. We need to bring that back, though. We do. I'm f all for that. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Love you guys. Love you so much.